we have a lot of questions coming in from a lot of startups looking to actually go out there and recruit people. Obviously, with limited funds, people are unable to dangle that carrot of a higher paying job. But then, how do you actually go out and manage to get good people to work for you? On Toolkit this week, Sahil Mane answers that very question. Help wanted, jobs available, looking to hire. Recruitment without the moolah to pay is a nightmare for every startup. What makes the right candidate? How do you incentivize? And retaining and keeping talent happy are some of the questions that we got the answers to from people that do this for a living. So how exactly do you find that diamond in the rough that's going to take you from the bottom of the mountain to the very top? As a founder, you need to understand whether you can afford to get a guy who's already in an industry similar to yours. And if not, then can you afford or rather, is it possible for you to get a guy who's probably not from the industry and probably not even had any work experience, but you can spend a little bit more time on him and you know that the, uh, if it's a smart guy, he can catch up and you know be at par with what your expectations are. For a startup, the target market are people who would want to be startups in the future and hence it's important to go to places and talk about yourself and what you're doing to people who want that inspiration. We went out to established organizations, um, you know, colleges and schools to try and find a mix of established professionals and, and people that were looking for an exciting alternative perhaps to going into the mainstream uh, work environment. Even a year before we got funding, we identified a, a sort of a hit list, if you like, of the top 10 people that we wanted in the business. The world's largest student-run organization is called ISEC. Please go ahead and use them. They have international, very experienced people who would like to go ahead and work in India. We go ahead and definitely use IITs and IIMs and uh, other MBA colleges uh, for summer internships. We also recommend a lot of entrepreneurs to go ahead and look at co-sourcing. Now that you found your perfect match, how do you convince them to climb on board? Frankly, I think the kind of people that we brought into our business wanted an accelerated opportunity to develop their skill sets. So what we try to do is we try to bring them in early and said, look, build the organization with us, build a team around us and you and, and for ClearTrip. And through that, I think that gave them a great challenge and a great opportunity. So that, that actually turned out to be the biggest motivational aspect, I think, of bringing people into the organization. ESOPs works, um, especially for startup members, that works. Uh, Another thing which works very well is designations. Uh, principal or president uh, when you are 21 years old is, sounds kind of cool. Third thing which works extremely well is the ability to make a difference. Another thing which works extremely well for uh, startups and for people who are trying to work there is flexible hours. And the last uh, and not the least at all, probably the most important is care. In a larger organization, you know, you always have a hierarchy when it comes to decision making. In fact, as an organization grows bigger, the decision making becomes slower. Over here, the guy will get flexibility. That's what you need to convince him about, is flexibility to decide things on the spot. To attract him, what you can do is uh, probably cut the salary part into two divisions. One is a fixed salary, which is probably good enough for him to sustain himself. And the other part is incentivized. So in this, you have a win-win situation. Showing the big picture is also one of the best weapons that an entrepreneur has when it comes to hiring. So you found the perfect person and they now share your vision. How do you ensure that they don't jump ship? People go ahead and give you between two to four to six months of their lives working for piddly amounts. Then grow enough to go ahead and either give them a higher designation, a higher role, or higher money. You can't continue to just dish out ESOPs as though they're going out of fashion. I mean, this is, this is a very expensive way of retaining talent. And I don't think it's entirely, I don't think it's very motivational either. Those that, that we feel are, are, are the right people for the business going forward, we invest very heavily in training, leadership training, helping them understand to mentor their own teams and build teams around them. And I think that's, I think that's incredibly valuable. I think when people get that kind of exposure, get that kind of investment, I think that they tend to get very excited and, and believe in the organization, which is what we're seeing here at Clitra. Giving the person the satisfaction of being an important integral part of your organization, making the person feel that every effort he's putting in is being noticed, is being valued. Well, now that you have all the ingredients required for building the perfect team, what are you waiting for? Go start up! 
And if there are any other ideas or questions affecting your startup, simply write in to us and we'll have them answered for you on next week's toolkit.